because I understand the technology and the landscape and the environment, it's easier for me yeah. to understand the challenges for the customers, to understand his pain points, and actually to come with a creative solution and to speak with the buyer in the same language. Yeah. So it doesn't feel that I'm here to sell, but to actually solve a problem for him. Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Tech Selfcraft with me, your host, James Hounslow. And today I'm delighted to be joined on the show today with Aaron Zilberman. How are you doing? Hey, James. How are you? I'm good. I'm very well. I really wanted to get you onto the, the show, Aaron, because you are a, a co-founder of a, a, a cybersecurity business, but you come from a sales background and um, it'd be really interesting to get some insight into how you have attacked being a founder and using your past knowledge of uh, sales leadership. Cyclops Security is the business that, that you found, and we're going to hear lots about the business and what you guys are doing. So as a way of getting started, if you could just give our audience uh, a bit of insight as to who you are. Okay. So everyone, nice to meet you. I'm Aaron. I'm 41 year old. I have three kids, lives in Israel for more than 17 years already in cybersecurity. Today I'm managing, or I'm the CEO of Cyclops Security, which is a startup company. In the last decade, I was actually running managing operation. That was the first tier of ArcSight. I was the, establishing the first MSSP in Israel. Then in the last five years, I was running the region for uh, Central East Europe in sales, of course, for RSA. Mm -hmm. um, that's it. In a quick brief. Quick brief. It's good. So you started out life. How did you get into sales? When did sales become Aaron's uh, skill set? So it's fantastic questions. Back in the days, I was, I believe, 26 or 27. After a few years as a security engineer, my boss actually used to take me to meet customers, to do some architecture pitches and stuff like this. And the whole audience was just listening to me. And basically, I was the only one that closed the deal at the end because <laughs> nobody, the last call was to Aaron, what Aaron says about this. And he felt that I can be a better salesperson and make more money. Yeah. Uh, so he came to my premises one day and said, you know what? I thought about it like for a few months now, and I think you can be a great sales rep and then sales leader and i want to help you to this to to make this transformation from a, a security architect to yeah. sales and uh, yeah and he made it Love uh, it. yeah so that's really interesting then would you say then your success as a sales person has been greatly affected by the fact that you really understand the technology and how it all goes together exactly so because I understand the technology and the landscape and the environment, it's easier for me yeah. to understand the challenges for the customers, to understand his pain points, and actually to come with a creative solution. Yeah. Okay. And speak sometimes to speak with the buyer in the same language. Yeah. So it doesn't feel that I'm here to sell, but to actually solve a problem for him. So how did you find the transition going from being a, a technical architect, engineer, to being a, a salesperson? It was like, it was an hard journey, I will say, because for someone to make this transformation from the technical side to a sales, sales manager, mm -hmm. first of all, you should understand like the meanings, okay? Uh, when you want to close a deal, Okay, yeah. there are lots of stuff that you don't know. The second thing is, I am a big believer in relationship. Yeah. Okay. So before that, I was I had relationship with the system. Now I have relationship with the person. Yeah. It's different. 
It's, yeah. Okay, so it's not just uh, uh, talking like uh, about technical issues and challenges, but actually let him know that you care about the persona that you're talking with. It means like to know some details about him, to know what he loves, yeah. create a relationship. It's like moving from, I will say, a person to machine into person to person. This was, I think, the biggest mm -hmm. challenge for me, although I'm a very person, a peep. Uh, you know, I was 26, very young. Uh, it took some time for me. And were you selling just into Israel or were you selling globally? So I started to Israel. Mm -hmm. Okay, Israel was my first region. But uh, um, after a few years, when I started uh, uh, to take like uh, a leadership role, uh, I started to sell in the US and EMEA, APJ. So it's different cultures. Mm -hmm. And not just different cultures, different needs, different people, different attitude, different language. It's all those stuff you need to adjust. You need to learn, coach different cultures, what they like. If you need to be polite or there are some people that they speak, I, I will say dirty stuff. Yeah. Okay. And there is before the deal. And after the deal, before the deal, there is like blockers. Yeah. After the deal, there is re different relationship. So yeah, there are like all kinds of cultures and attitude and persons. And you need to be like, like a very elastic yeah. in order to make everyone or the majority to love you and to make business with you. How long did it take you to understand the sales process and the relationship, because it is tough. Cause like you mentioned that, like you had the relationship with technology. The one thing I was say, so I used to be, I used to sell cars, I used to sell BMWs and I'm talking to the guys within recruitment and they said, what's the difference? And I was like, you have you, your customer who's, who's buying the car and you have to understand them. Imagine the car then has feelings and the car decides whether or not they go with the person. So you've now gone from something that doesn't have feelings or opinions to a person that has got feelings and opinions and thought processes. How long did it take you to, to get that? And how good a salesperson were you? I would say in the last, in the first three years, it was, it was quite hard. Mm. Okay. It was quite hard. I lost lots of deals. I didn't understand the meaning of being a salesperson, the sales processes, who is your champion, who is your buyer? In, in RSA, we worked by a framework, uh, MedPeak. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, back in the days, in 2008, I believe, 2009, 2010, there was no framework. No. I worked like it was my first uh, sales manager uh, position. I did like, you know, it's kind of, it's surviving. You need to survive in the jungle. Yeah. So you need to find yourself the food. You need to cook it. You need to hunt it. So you do everything by your own. Like nobody is actually training you. It was a small company. Um, it was very hard. But yeah. it's good when someone is just pushing you to the water and uh, let, you, let you understand how to swim. Yeah. Or, so this is what my boss did with me. But then I moved to the other role as a managing bigger sales department. Mm -hmm. And then I came with much more experience and I had a few salespersons in my team. And I, I actually gave them the same, I think, if I remember, the, the same feeling. You need to do, <laughs> men got to do what you got, what men yeah, got yeah. to do. So I pushed them to the water and let them know that this is the way, this is the way, the way to survive. You need to learn everything by yourself. You need to hunt your food. You, I'm not going to give you anything. Like mm -hmm. I'm not going to speak, to speak with the customer for you. I'm not going to close for you the deals. You will do everything. And after that, I will add comments or uh, let you know what I think or mm -hmm. what you should, what, what should, should have been done better. And I think that in, in those days, if you ask like people that used to work for me, 
they came after me like when I left to the other role and, and when I got promoted in mm. other places. And this is, they can tell you this is my uniqueness. Yeah. Okay. That I actually, I'm not afraid to jump into the water with my people, even if I don't know what to do and to win it all. Okay. This yeah. is like something that I understand like back in the days. After that, I moved to managing a bigger department or a bigger operation with 50 people. And then I moved to RSA, which is like large enterprise and more frameworks about the med pick. And then I've changed actually my skin and I had to follow this framework. And then I think that I understand like more US based sales than anything else. What? They are looking in the U.S. or uh, uh, how to sail in the U.S. And here we are now, Cyclops. When did you decide that sales leadership would be something to do? Because it's a really interesting roadmap because I, I can see and I understand why good technical architects, if they can sell, are very good salespeople. And then you have success in sales. But you're in control of everything that you're doing. What made you then take the leap into sales leadership? Because then in sales leadership, you're less in control because you've got people that you've then got to try and get through and, uh, and build up and you're living it through those, those reps. When did you see in your mind that you'd like to give that go? What made you think that you'd be a successor at a sales leadership role? First of all, even when I was a leader leading sales, I was always there. Okay. I was always there, by, but behind the scene. Yeah. So that means that I had some customers that was always in touch with me and I was being to understand them and give them the, the solutions and keep selling them. Yeah. Okay. But I think that after, after you survive a few years in the woods, when yeah. you hunt your food and cook your food, and you feel that you are capable to do anything. Yeah. Okay. So it's a lot of confidence. Plus, plus, I think that uh, sales basically it's in some people in their DNA. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So sure. not everyone can be a salesman or a sales leader. It's, it's something in your blood. It's something yeah. that you need passion to. So... I understand, I, I, if I remember correct, yeah, I understand it after a few years that this is, was like the best move I've ever read or ever did. And if you ask me, like changing from a sales manager to a sales leader was basically for me a milestone before I would open my startup. Yeah. Okay. Because as direct sales is like different than managing actually a quota for uh, five, 10 different salesperson. Yeah. And um, I'd like to get um, a bit of an understanding of your thought process and the roles and the companies you've had. Because is Cyclops the first, is your first startup as a founder, but is it the first startup that you've worked in? Yeah. Talk me through your decision to work for those larger organizations, because we're seeing a lot and I love it. I much prefer. And the reason why I want to talk about this is that the experience that I feel people gain by going out and working and doing this, there seems to be a lot of urgency, particularly in Israel and in America, to either come out of the military or come out of school and basically launch a business. And it's really hard at the best of time. It's really hard to make a success of it. But having no real life experience of where it is, so what made you... Had you ever had the itch for a startup before or was it like, I want to do this first and then when I'm ready, do the startup? Exactly. So it was, I want to do that first. Mm -hmm. So something that it related to my personal life, I will tell you. So yeah. before I got married, yeah, I said, even if I, um, I was in love with my, she was my girlfriend then my wife. I, we were like in love and everything, but I, said, but I told to myself that there is a process, yeah. okay? You can be in love in the first year, you, you can be in love in the second year, but I'm not going to get married until we'll be like at least 
four years together, yeah. three of them, we will live together and we will have a dog before. Yeah. <laughs> Why is that? Why is that? You need to look at the old picture. Yeah. Okay. And to add like much experience with, with this person or in this role in order to understand this is what you want and this is what you need and you are ready for the next thing. Yeah. So yeah. in sales or, or in, in my professional life, it's, it's the same. So there is, you need to, ju- to jump between the levels until you get to like to the top. Yeah. So it was like starting as a security architect, then moving to sales, then sales leadership, then moving to a big vendor. Big yeah. vendor for, for me was like the top of the mountain before I get to a startup, before I start to like my own startup. Okay. Even though I had three different offers to open a startup from like investors came to me and actually offered me for start startup that already been uh, exited. Yeah. Okay. But Every time, ta- everything has its time. Love it. I'd like to dig into the reasons behind that, what you learned at um, RSA. And the reason why I say that is because we, we work with a lot of early stage businesses and talking to VCs all the time. And one of the biggest challenges for startups will face is the go-to-market side of it. And also in particularly understanding how to hire Go to market people is a huge challenge um, for people because most of the time they've never um, done it before. What did you learn at RSA on such a large scale of of people on not only different types of people, but how to interview, how to know what you're hiring, which has put you in such a strong position now you're doing it yourself? Fantastic question because this is this is a, today I'm part of the Deloitte Lunchpad, which is like lots of startups kind of community through Deloitte and, and every one of the people like they chose from 50 or 60 startups, they chose something like 10 or 11. Everyone, we had the meeting and everyone had to, to speak about what is expert is, what is best thing that he can he, he do. Yeah. So I told everyone that my, like my best thing or my expertise around hiring salespeople. Mm-hmm. I know that there are lots of salespeople out there that they don't know really how to sell, okay? They are, they are selling to you that they are the best, they are rock stars and everything, but no, they have the senses mm-hmm. and I have the experience to hire the greatest salespersons. Uh, I have a, frame, a framework that uh, I created myself how to identify like the best sales sales managers that uh, I would like to hire. So I I can tell you that in RSA, we hired like mostly people in in my region, which is in New York. Mm -hmm. And it's different from salespeople in the US. Yeah. Different culture, different language. And I will say different level of, how can someone like telling you bullshit about yeah. yourself? Yeah. I think that the difference between me to other co-founders with the sales leadership experience, it's that I know better yeah. how to hire salespeople. Lots of founders that I know, friends of mine that are techies, yeah. they failed more than four, five, six times hiring the good, hiring good people. And yeah. I think it's like, it's, it's an experience that you get like yourself as a, as a head hunter. Yeah. Uh, uh, after from your experience, who is good and who is not so good. Good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm really interested in this framework that you've, that you've created. I'd love to talk Later. about that for a moment. How long had you been going? How much experience have you had in interviewing, hiring people? before you formulated this, this framework? It was like, I think in the last six years, I will say, before establishing Cyclops, I hired or interviewed, I will say, I interviewed more than 150 people. Yeah. Okay. 
in sales and I had, I don't know, 20, yeah, maybe. And the thing is that when I hire someone, first of all, I want him like to not speak about himself and not trying to sell. Yeah. Okay. Himself too much overselling. I will say lots of people are overselling. I yeah. did that. I'm the best. Yeah. I'm the best. I'm the, I'm the best ever. Okay. No, yeah. you're not the best ever, but this framework, actually, I want to see that this person has an experience in sales. First of all, after that, he's not talking about himself all the time. He speaks about the pain points that he solved in the, in his last role, what kind of a, a product he was selling, what kind of roles he did, yeah. where did he came from? Okay. It was just one day decided that he sells or he was like techie before and that did it sales experience is one of the most important things for me in a person. Okay. Yeah. And I want to be, uh, I want to see uh, uh, stability. What does it mean? It means that I want to see that this guy was not one or two year in every uh, uh, company that he was like four and five years and actually got promoted. Okay. Yeah. The same organization. So this is uh, uh, important. And the last thing will be that he has kind of framework that is working by, by, by this framework. Yeah. Okay. That is not just all over the place. And how does your interview process work? How many stages do you have a test involved in the interview process? Sure. So I will say like between uh, three to five uh, uh, stages. Mm -hmm. Um, and one of the, one of the stages is actually, I have like friends that they are CROs mm -hmm. in all kinds of places. One of the stages is for them to give me their opinion about this guy or oh, girl, doesn't matter this person, I would say. So how, what would you say? So you're, this is a really interesting point to, to, to hammer home. Because I will, as you can imagine, the role that I do, I'm working with founders, particularly first-time founders all the time, and funding them that they're their first salesperson, and largely probably never hired a salesperson before. And I ask them who they're going to get outside to interview the person, and they're like, no, I'm going to do it. And I'm like, but you've never hired a salesperson before. Coming from <laughs> a background of yourself where you've got 17 years of sales experience, Ooh. And you're still getting a industry expert to interview this person. So what is the value that you're getting through that? And why should someone who hasn't got 17 years of sales experience should be getting an outsider to have a conversation with these people? Always better. Okay. Uh, I count on myself 100%, first of all. Yes. Yeah. But I have like my trusted advisors. Yeah. Okay. It's like I'm a CEO now. Okay. And, but I still have trusted advisors that are CISOs and CROs. Why is that? Because I think that people that are coming from different angles and different experiences will have something to add. Okay. That you might miss. Yeah. Okay. So even if it's 2% or 1%, I'm, I'm 90, 99%, I still want some other opinions to hear. And I think those guys that think that, you know, they just came out from a 800 or from IDF and they think yeah. they know all, you know, it's, a, it's overconfident and they wish them good luck. Why do you think it's so important to go to that kind of length of detail and, and conversations to get hiring right for salespeople? Because you can fail with salespeople. They can be a great salesperson, but don't know how to manage processes as well. Sometimes it's, under, uh, it's hard for you to understand what kind of process they are working with. Okay. And some, sometimes it doesn't fit the process that you like to, uh, to establish in your company yeah. and, their, and their attitude and their personas 
can be in the first, second, and third meeting, can be something that you think that might be great for you, but after that, you figure out that it was just, an, just a custom. Yeah. Okay, why? Because they are salespeople. Okay, yeah. salespeople knows how to act. They know how to work different customs. And yeah, that, that can be like good sometimes, but bad, bad for you as a leader. Yeah. Now fast forward into to Cyclops. I'd love to understand how did it come about? I'd love to understand how you're attacking it with a sales mind. And then I'd also like to understand how now you're a year and a bit in, how you're finding life as a CEO rather than a sales leader and, and how you're tackling not giving everything to sales, but also giving time to the other part. So firstly, how did Cyclops come about and who are you guys? What problem are you solving? In Cyclops today, we are 20 people. Um, we are all a, like we are seed round from last September. We raised our seed round. Um, so I will tell you, we started to sell Cyclops like a few months ago. And the sales uh, goes, I will say fine. Because mm -hmm. first of all, the economic situation is not like the best. Nice. And, and second is we are like, we are now working on market education. Okay. So it's, it's, I will say it's different from startup to startup because there are startups that you don't need like education, education to the people. And with Cyclops, you need education with a new field, which is like a, CSMA, cybersecurity mesh architecture, and basically Cyclops is an efficiency tool, efficiency tool. So what we are doing basically is connecting your cybersecurity stack into our like very sophisticated engine, which involves an AI as well. And we uh, normalize and correlate your data automatically and get you like, uh, get you like data insights on your data, which is already correlated with context. And we get you all the asset visibility, where are your assets, where you are not protected, what are your risks? And on top of that, you have the look and feel as Google, a search, an AI search, nice. which is like interaction. There is interaction between you and the system, which is missing today with many tools cause all of the tools, things that they give you like 100%, you have an alert, you have an, like a threat or something of vulnerability. Boom. This is severity. I, this is CVSS score nine. Yeah. How do they know it's critical for you? Okay. With Cyclops, you have an interaction when they, like the system asks you, this is what you're looking for. That does this evident or this uh, risk is related to your job. And this is how you train the model with Cyclops. So you have an interaction like ChatGPT, okay? Yeah. Uh, just with the uh, more sophisticated with graphs and risks for cybersecurity. And uh, my sales approach basically is like saving time, efficiency, saving headcounts for your team. And of course, we are displacing some, I will say, domains and the asset management and the risk-based vulnerability management. Like and it. it goes well. It okay. goes well, very well. So how did you know your co-founder? Is there, is there one co-founder? What's the relationship? <clears throat> so we are three co-founders. We are very good friends. Actually, we met, we met before we started the company in some, like I will say, with common friends. And then we were all working in the same field. Uh, my CTO is already 12, 12 years in cybersecurity, was in a 200, very smart guy. My chief product, Biran, came, he was the VP product for Axonius before. Uh, and we met in some community uh, events before we started Cyclops. And uh, we, start, we, we had like a, investors that uh, came to me and told me I will put money on you when you whenever you want to start a, a new startup and I found the right team for it and we yeah. started Cyclops. What what is it do you think that VC saw in 
in you because it's really interesting like when i because i interview vcs as well um of course i'm talking to vcs all the time and the more experienced vcs they'll tell you that they spend more time looking at the person now and less time looking at the product and what they're doing um yes what what do you think vcs saw in you that they were, were were willing to write a check on you without even knowing what product it is i would say like a very large experience mm-hmm. in cyber security in managing big operations mm-hmm. uh, in the last decade i was taking uh, companies from mm-hmm. zero to 10 and from 5 to 24 million dollars arr so I will say it's all about numbers. After all, those VCs, they are investing in people yeah. that can, I will say, 10x their numbers. Yeah. So this is what they are looking for. Nice. So they saw me as someone that can 10x their numbers. Yeah. How do you think, when well, you're working there with two, two other co-founders, probably more technical, from coming in from a sales background, how do you think you might have tackled the first 12 months differently had it just been the other two without you or without that knowledge of sales? You mean like my co-founders? Yeah, if the co-founders didn't didn't have the luxury of Eran in their team. Ah, okay. What do you what do you think they would have done differently? And what value add having sales in from such an early starting point? Yeah, wow, it's very complicated to answer because they are not salespersons. And I can tell you that they had to bring someone. Okay, if it was not me, someone, they they need to add someone in place as as a salesperson. Otherwise, I think (laughs) they've been a a bit stuck. Yeah, It's the same that I can tell you about myself. I can't be a CTO, okay, because I'm not techy enough. Yeah. I think that every uh, tech entrepreneur needs someone that understands the business and know how to manage sales processes and to understand customers and their needs. And it's a special persona, I would say. Yeah. It's, like I said, it's in your DNA. Yeah. So you've just started selling to clients now. So how's that gone? How have you found creating the right messaging and, and building the pipeline? Yeah, it was hard. Yeah. Okay. It took some time to create a good messaging that will be clear enough because basically the problem in the cybersecurity market that as everyone has the same messaging. Yeah. I'm the best. I will solve you everything. I'm like the best in application security. I'm the best in CSPM. I'm simply the best. I have the best product. And you need to, uh, to find like the right words in order to, I will say, to bring or to write the best messaging that in five minutes of pitch, everyone in the room will be like, wow, yeah, this is what we want. This is, this is a dream. This is the best product I've ever, I've ever seen. I want to see the demo and stuff like this. Okay. So it took some time. I will say a few months. But we are now we are there, and uh, you can see the reactions, of yeah. the customers. Love it. And and your messaging, are you are you doing messaging? You attracting people in North America, Europe? Where's your target audience? Because that's tough as well, isn't it? Yes, I, I will say now just US. Mm-hmm. Okay, but there are some opportunities in Europe as well. But we are mostly focused on this, like ninety five percent. And what's your thinking behind that, other than the obvious scale? Why, why do you, why do you think? Why, like, why, why focusing you... on the US? Ah, why focus? First of all, it's the b- big money. And I think that because I'm like planned to relocate okay. with the family to US next year, this is my target market. And this is where I want to grow the company, the go to market, to recruit, of course, the GT- GTM team and basically money <laughs> yeah I, I get that excited whereabouts in the u.s are you would you be relocating are you gonna head to boston with most of the other cyber no, Aust- israelis austin austin we go to austin yeah nice like yeah, it yeah. 
uh, much more yeah. central, much easier to to uh, to get across. Like it. Um, yeah. Before we hear about the future and and what you guys are, are planning to do, I, I said it would come around quick, and I appreciate all the the knowledge and insight you've given so far. But this is the the opportunity now where we get to switch, and you get to ask me one question that you might have always wanted to ask a recruiter. What I want to ask you, basically, I want to ask you why you chose to be a recruiter and for, from your experience, I will say what is like the thing that make you better recruiter or how do you dominate yourself from storm, like from the other recruiters that you have so many of them and when the market is so big. There's a lot of them. A really simple and straightforward reason as to why I became a recruiter. Uh, cause I was a, I, I did sell cars and then 20 years ago, I knew the recruiters could earn more money and it was a slight, so I moved into it. So I, I sold cars for about five years and then, and then into recruitment. And to answer questions like kind of what makes me better, there's a lot of really good recruiters out there. There's also a lot of recruiters that are not so good, mainly because there's there's no rules of engagement. And if there was, then it might remove some people. But I would say what probably sets me apart and probably what sets the top 10% apart is probably more a genuine care for the client and not just trying to get an offer. Particularly in sales, it's really hard to get hiring right. And some recruiters will work to just get an offer. But even though they know that person's not right... So a lot of people will look at skill sets. And I spend a lot of time talking to people that you look at a person ahead of a skill set because a skill set is learned, it's taught, you can get it. But the person that fits the characteristics that's right within your business to stand the best chance of success, that's the most important thing. So we, I've been doing it similarly to myself. I've been doing this for so long. I have probably interviewed over 20,000 salespeople. Okay, wow. That's a lot of people yeah. to speak to. So I understand what people are looking for, what motivates them. I can tell a good one pretty quickly from a bad one. And I can also understand what a, a, a leader needs, what they're looking for. And that's one of the biggest things that when, when we take job specs, we challenge people on what they think um, they need. And so that's where we can add that, that value piece in there that we're just not looking to get an offer. We're trying to, and we run the average sales, uh, found as high as they make 45% of salespeople will not see their first anniversary in a startup. We run at about 93% are still there uh, 15 months later, but it comes from detail, understanding, and, and, and making sure you find the right person, not just someone that'll accept a job. Interesting. Good yeah. point. A really good question. I've not been, that is one I've not been asked. So you, you're just back from a, a trip to the US. You've just started showing people the, the product. What's next? What does 2024 look for you? It looks like economically the people will be spending a bit more. But what does it look like for you guys? Towards uh, 2024, I will say that for Cyclops, we are going to raise our A round. Okay, which will be like in the middle of the year, and um, and the plan, of course, is to double the amount of people here after that, and uh, of course, like I said, to move to the U.S., re recruit the GTM, the go-to-market team, and of course, to help our customers to solve real and big problems in the cybersecurity, and be there for them. Because we all understand that ends ends of everything is like related to trust. Yeah. Okay. When the customer trusts you and they know you and they feel you, it's empower your sales and then with sales brings growth. Yeah. This is basically it. We are going to invest in powering, of course, customers and with that the sales. So will only the next hires will only come in once you've received the funding, or do you think you'll make some hires prior to the Series A funding? It's a difficult, it's a difficult tightrope now, isn't it? Yeah, 
Yeah, I, I'm, uh, we are not going to do now uh, any recruitments or like sales until the uh, mid of uh, Q2. Uh, first of all, we have, I'm doing it. We have yeah. me leading it. Uh, yeah, yeah. And um, the saving, we're keeping the money. The plan of spending the money was changed. I have some people that, <clears throat> that I know that they want to join us. They, they used to work with me or uh, with some people, like with one of the founders here in a uh, former, in the, the former positions, but I don't, I, I still don't know to answer on this. If we'll need like an uh, hiring firm or we do it by the, by ourselves, I believe that some hiring firm will be involved. Yeah. I always say, and it's good that you've got those people there. Cause that's one of the key things. When I talk to founders about hiring VPs of sales is that a good VP of sales will have people that will come with them. Exactly. And, exactly. and you need to utilize that because it's critical. Any VP of sales that can't bring a salespeople with them, you have to question them because a VP of sales is a coach. They're a leader and people follow leaders. So look, I think that's, I, that is a great starting point to have those people wanting to, to come along. I always ask before I let you go, You've got a lot of experience in sales, a lot of experience in cybersecurity. You've now for your first year and a half or so under your belt as a, as a founder of a tech business. If you were speaking to an audience of people thinking about founding a tech company, what piece of advice would you give coming from a sales angle to founders to looking to start out? First of all, don't be afraid to do any mistakes. Yeah. Okay. And don't get in love with your product, get yeah. in love with the solution. solution. Okay. And the thing is with sales, it's the, I think that of course, everything when it starts, yeah. it's really, really hard and really challenges, but never give up and be focused mm -hmm. on the solution and the challenge you solve and that's it. I really enjoyed this conversation. really enjoyed the, the chat we had before you went over to, to the US. I think Cyclops is a business that I think stands a very good chance of, of being hugely successful. And I can't wait to uh, watch you rise up as you go. And next year is a big year for it. And it's, it'll be the, you guys go on this journey. So in challenges times, I really appreciate you uh, giving us the time and sharing your knowledge. Thank you very much, James.